Hello guys, today we are going to discuss about amorphic hepatitis and abscess. Talking about the incidence of amorphic abscess, it is commoner than pyogenic abscess in third world countries that are also known as developing countries. They are especially present in those lying in the tropical and subtropical regions. Let's talk about etiology. Amorphic hepatitis or abscess is complication of amorphic colitis. In etiology, we should talk about three things, predisposing factor, causative organism, and the mode of infection. The predisposing factor here is low standard of hygiene and high humidity. Interamoeba histolytica is the causative organism. And the mode of infection is ingestion of cysts with improperly washed vegetables. In intestine, what happens is the cysts are changed into trophozoites inducing amoebic colitis. Here we can see the flax shaped amoebic ulcer in the right and left side of the colon. This is superior mesenteric vein which drains the right side of the colon. This is splenic vein and this is inferior mesenteric vein which drains the left side of the colon. The splenic vein and superior mesenteric vein combines together forming portal vein. The portal vein in turn divides into the right and left branch into the hilum of the liver. The trophozoite from the right side of the colon runs upward through the superior mesenteric vein and reaches the portal vein and through the right branch of the portal vein to the right side of the liver. Thus, the trophozoite on the right side of the colon will enter to the right side of the colon right side of the liver right side of the colon to the right side of the liver and the trophozoite from the left side of the colon transfers upward through the inferior mesenteric vein through the splenic vein into the portal vein and through the left branch of the portal vein towards the left lobe of the liver so if there is amoebic colitis on the right side of the le right side of the colon there will be amoebic hepatitis or amoebic abscess on the right side of the liver if there is amoebic colitis on the left side of the colon there will be amoebic hepatitis or abscess on the left side of the liver what usually happens is the amoebic colitis is more common on the right side thus resulting into more amoebic hepatitis and abscess on the right lobe of the liver. Here when parasite enters the right lobe of the liver it will cause liquefactive necrosis and thus it will form many small abscesses which in turn combines together giving rise to single and unilocular amoebic abscess. Talking about the wall of the abscess, it is saggy which you can see in the figure, the saggy shape and it harbors amoeba. Here you can see the amoeba on the wall and this here is the wall. Talking about the pus, it is sterile. The sterile nature of the pus is so because the amoeba is present in the wall not in the pus. It is brown chocolate color and sometimes it is pinkish. Classically, it is described as ancobi shosh appearance. Talking about the sight, it is present on the posterior superior segment of the right lobe of the liver. Here this is diaphragm, lung, pleural space and here this is liver. 
here you have right and left runs a portal then so and here we have abscess on the posterior superior aspect of the liver the segmental branch of the posterior superior aspect of the liver is in direct continuity with the right branch of the portal vein thus making it the common site for the abscess so now we are going to discuss about the complications of amoebic abscess let's discuss about the rupture when you rupture upwards the first thing that's going to happen is formation of long abscess usually what happens is the pleural space is obliterated thus long getting affected earlier than that of the pleural space if it ruptures into pleura it will cause empyema in pericardium it can cause cardiac tamponade in peritoneum it can cause peritonitis and it can rupture into any other intestinal organs the most common complication is secondary bacterial infection another complication is calcification of chronic liver abscess if the abscess rupture upwards into the bronchus it can result into formation of a fistula known as bronchopleural biliary fistula it can rupture outward resulting into pointing below the costal margin it can spread through the blood resulting into pyemic amoebic abscess the last complication is destruction of the liver with liver cell failure and ultimately death the clinical features we talk about history general picture local picture and the picture of complications in history we will find the history of amoebic colitis in most cases but it's not always obtained low grade fever is present with other constitutional manifestations like anorexia nausea weakness and weight loss patient is usually pale and toxic thus giving a earthy look for memorization purpose you can memorize it through this diagram which gives you the imagination of the earth the picture of the globe in this diagrammatic representation talking about the local picture there is upper right abdominal pain usually tender hepatomegaly tenderness in not right intercostal spaces patient may have right sided pleural effusion and basal lung collapse here we have a diagrammatic representation this is effusion and the collapsed lung this you can see here the tenderness in right intercostal spaces and the tender hepatomegaly thus what you can see from this diagram is the patient has earthy look with right sided pleural effusion and collapsed lung tenderness in the right intercostal space and tender hepatomegaly talking about differential diagnosis we have pyogenic liver abscess acute cholecystitis perforated ulcer acute viral hepatitis pyelonephritis and hepatocellular carcinoma especially in black africans which assume a rapidly progressive course with pain and constitutional symptoms in investigations the first we have is stool analysis and serological tests which may be elisa in non endemic areas it is very useful but in endemic areas it is positive in almost all of the population so it is not that useful the second one is blood picture which will show leukocytosis and anemia 
Imaging can be done like ultrasound, CT, which is very useful, and chest X-ray. Therapeutic test can be performed by using metronidazole. An improvement in local and general complications after three days confirms the diagnosis. This is a yaksha picture of amoebic abscess. You can see here the elevated right couple of the diaphragm and hazardness on the lower lung field denoting pleural effusion. Here we have ultrasound picture of amoebic abscess. It shows a homogeneous hypoechoic lesion with a smooth wall. This is the characteristic for amoebic abscess. We can differentiate it from pyogenic abscess as pyogenic abscess may be smooth walled or it can have irregular wall. And amoebic abscess is always homogeneous while pyogenic abscess is heterogeneous a lot of the time. This is another ultrasound picture which is taken after metronidazole therapy. Here you can see the smooth wall of the ultrasound abscess, outer wall of the ultrasound. Where we see the saggy wall of the abscess which is very characteristic and the hypoechoic homogeneous lesion resembling push. This is a CT scan. We can see here the single and unilateral abscess, which is most probably amoebic abscess. The content inside is homogeneous. And we have here the double target sign, which is characteristic for hepatic lesions. Uh, the inner rim is highly attenuated, and the outer rim is low attenuated, showing the difference. This is another. CT picture of late stage liver abscess, which is large. Here, this is in the posterior superior aspect of the liver, right top of the liver, thus denoting the amoebic abscess. Talking about the treatment, we have three modalities conservative treatment, ultrasound guided percutaneous drainage, percutaneous aspiration and open drainage. Conservative treatment is highly successful. Metronidazole is the drug of choice. 800 mg three times daily for seven to 10 days will do the job. Other drugs used are tinidazole, ornitazole, and for cyst eradication, we can use diloxanide furate and paramomycin. Ultrasound guided aspiration. We have four indications for aspiration in case abscesses. We have A, B, C and localized intraperitoneal abscess. For A, we have amoebic abscess, B, brain abscess and C, code abscess. The indication here for aspiration is for the abscesses that fails to respond to treatment within 72 hours and for large abscesses, the method is by a large bore spinal needle under local anesthesia. We can see the needle here. For site of aspiration, the front, the ultrasound guided aspiration from the front is the ideal site for aspiration. For anterior abscess, the needle is inserted below coastal margin. And for unknown site, in the previous days, aspiration was done through the earth intercostal space in the mid clav mid axillary line. For the posterior abscess, needle is inserted through the tenth intercostal space. Few days later, ultrasound is repeated, and if the abscess cavity has recollected, or if the abscess is more than 5 cm in diameter, aspiration is repeated. The third modality is open drainage. The indications for open drainage are presence of secondary infections or, uh, or complications, dangerous complications. If the abscess is pointing, if aspiration is difficult, 
because of multilocular abscess or the presence of pus. Here we have abscess on the posterior aspect of the liver. For the posterior abscess, we we take a subporistal resection of the rib, the tubal rib, and we lift the pleura upward, thus draining the posterior abscess posteriorly. This approach is termed as subperistial and extrapleural approach. For anterior abscess, we can see here there is this is peritoneum forming peritoneal cavity. There are adhesions present. So this is the abscess. So we just make an incision and drain the anterior abscess from the subcostal region and by extra peritoneal approach. We don't open the peritoneum, rather we deal with the peritoneum here. And the last approach is transperitoneal, which is used very rarely these days. Here we can see the exposed abscess, aspiration done and the catheter inserted. For drainage, you can see here the drainage. Thank you for watching this video. Have fun.